Hi guys, so welcome back and I did say I was going to be doing a couple of chapters today. I've got chapter 6 uploading now as well as chapter 5 parts 1 and 2 and parts 1 and 2 of chapter 6. So this is going to be chapter 7, a hangover sent direct from mother nature. So I'll be quiet for the cutscene. So I guess I was finally about to go and experience the other side of Sao Paulo firsthand. The bit people try to ignore. The unpleasant memory they try to obliterate with cocktails and helicopters and parties and lines of blow like rich fools the world over. I was a day off the sauce for the first time in years and knew I was due a hangover sent direct from Mother Nature. Chapter, so I decided to head straight for the street party that seemed to be raging. Either that or it. some other fool had gotten there before me and now was being ritually sacrificed. I've had better oh, ideas, that guy's my but then I've also had worse ones, Facebook. like accepting this job in the first place. You lost, kid. Speak English? Uh-huh, I speak English. Uh -huh, I speak English. Have you ever seen this girl? Fabiana, come here for a second. Look at I know lots of girls. Sexy. Come on, come on. This way. Where are you going? Wait a minute. Down there? myself a tour guide. So I gotta follow this kid now, and he's leading me to Fabiana, I think. Two types of people. Those who spend their lives trying to build a future, and those who spend their lives trying to rebuild the past. For too long I've been stuck in between, hidden in the dark. What was I really doing walking in there with my bad haircut and ridiculous shirt? Was I there to make something right? Or was I just using a messed up situation to indulge myself, grasping at some desperate delusion and control? Maybe the two went hand in hand more than I cared to admit. <laughs> some kind of street party. This was the kind of reality Americans paid top dollar to see. Slums had become tourist attractions, places where yuppies could gawk at the endless spirit of the poor from the inside of their bulletproof buses. I felt dumb and exposed. I missed the booze. Not that it mattered, sober or drunk, I was hardly undercover. I stood out in this place like a street walker in a monastery. <laughs> What do you need, guys? What do you need? Uh, easy, pal, easy. Uh, look, I didn't mean any offense. Uh, Desculpa, amigo, por favor. Passa aqui. Dá logo. Dá logo. 
da puta. Valeu, mano. Bem-vindo à favela Nova Esperança. All things considered, I was gonna have to look on this as a good outcome. I was deep in gang territory. These kids were raised hating clowns like me. Middle-income ass-kickers who protected the rich by shooting kids like them. Oh, I need to get my trousers wet. First Max has just bought the them. Somehow I'd still ended up in the gutter. Don't have a gun yet. So when I reach chapter 8, then I'll call that the last one for today. When I reach chapter 8. Brazilians came out of the womb kicking a ball. And for kids like these, was there one legal chance that it be and free eyes. That's 8. Uh, I'm a little lost. Perdido? Onde uh, estou? I'm in a lugar errado, rapá. Ah, não compreendi. Uh, I need a phone, a telephone. Bora. Publico. A gente não é centro de informação turística, não. Well, they weren't going to help me. And who could blame them? I was a dumb American in a place where dumb Americans were less popular than the clap. If I was going to find my way out of this mess, I was on my own. <coughs> I have to admit, Max is not going to get any good, you know, good contact with these people like because the, these are all bad. Brazilians and they don't the speak the language that he's in a country where they don't speak the really language he does, he's, he's American, Max is American. <coughs> <coughs> Come on, I want to use my gun, not a... Uh, wait, am I going to uh, turn around? <coughs> Stop it, guys. Not really good at the moment, but I want to get into the action at the moment. I want a gun. I'm fed up with this. I want a gun. Hello. Myself and save these kids the bother. Hey, that telephone, telephone, vai lá no fundo, segue frente. When you're stuck in a foreign country and you don't know the words for reverse charges, and you're in some lonely skin joint in the middle of some poor slum, having just had every last cent robbed from you, and you call yourself a bodyguard, then you know you're a loser. Hey, Matt, I buy a beer. Do I know you? I don't think so. Look, if you're gonna shoot me. Make it quick, I'm a little busy. I, if I was going to shoot you, I wouldn't waste a beer. Wait, we won't try and dry out of this. Just a soda, please. Why don't you go sit down? What a mess, I hate it. I'm shook for me. Thank you, Rob. Interesting haircut, by the way. I have to tell you that. <clears throat> Wilson da Silva. Very good to meet you. Nice to meet you, I think. Although you'll forgive me if I promise never to employ you as my bodyguard. You did a great job watching after Rodrigo Bronco. Fuck you. You were set up. Bet your ass I was. Now, let me ask you something. Have you ever seen this guy? Serrano. Yeah, he's a real sweetheart. Yeah, he sure put his gang out of business. But don't worry, those guys, 
a small fry. This is the guy I'm interested in. Nevis. And this is his little buddy here. Neil Hegel. They work for this vigilante group. Crash a crater. Yeah, I know. They're very popular with right-wing politicians. Like Victor Brown. Now you see, many years ago, he helped clear some villages on a bit of land Rodrigo Bronco wanted to develop. Rodrigo Bronco? Yes, he did some very bad things. Anyway, have you ever seen this guy? Maybe at the stadium. I knew you were involved in that business. You know, I wanted to investigate that, but I got an order to blame it on some local street kids instead. Tell me, what happened there? Nothing. We simply went to hand over some cash to this guy's clowns for a, a ransom exchange when this guy's clowns jumped us and they shot everybody. Apart from you and your boy Passos. That's right. We had to shoot our way out of there. <laughs> they let you go. <laughs> it's okay. It's a little weird right now. But I know that Victor Bronco is involved in all this. I just don't know how or why. And I know that the Coupe are involved in all this as well, but I just don't know how or why. And you know what's going to happen? The moment is going to come along when I put all these pieces together. And at that moment, someone is going to come along and put a bullet in my head. Anyway, listen. You might want this. Thank you. I'll need it. And if it's Fabiana Bronco you've come looking for, I think she's up the hill. So why don't you just go get her? I don't know. I'm a cop. I'll fight corruption. I'll stand up to the rich and dumb, but if I go up that hill right now, I'll be dead in three minutes or less. Maybe you too, Max. You're in the jungle now. So it appears. If you survive the next hour, let's speak. You help me. And I'm gonna do what I can to help you. Good luck. I didn't know what to make of what this guy had just told me what was true and what was just someone else's convenient bullshit. Then some less than friendly locals came in and found me in the wrong mood to party. No comprende. Leave me alone. Do you got something for me? Do you? I'll tell you what I got. I got a gun, and if anybody thinks they're gonna take it from me, they'd be dead wrong. Oh! One thing at a time, Max. <laughs> That was one long cutscene. Okay, what if it just 14? Call that part, just part one and do part two. Maybe uh, I won't have enough time to do chapter seven and eight, so I'll do them all on the 13th. Did very well. Shit, died. Alright. I'll do a little bit further. Alright, I'll see you for chapter or part two of this.